Hello everyone, welcome. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today I'm going to be creating an easel card, and I've never created one of these before, but they're so much fun. And it's not just an ordinary easel card, it's going to be a slimline easel card. So I have some beautiful products from Scrappy Tells Crafts. I have the Fairy Botanicals, and this is just a, a huge set full of beautiful flowers and toadstools and cute sentiments. And I have the coordinating dies as well. I love the Scrappy Tells dies because they're so detailed and they even cut out the inner bits to some of these images. It cuts out the nooks and crannies between the leaves and the toadstools and the grass. I love it when dies do that because it really makes your images pop and look sharp. I also have this set is called Slimline Everyday Borders 2 and it cuts out clouds and grass and toadstools and even the little caps for the toadstools. So these are the products I'm going to be using in today's video. I'm going to start out by showing you how to create a slimline easel card. This is a piece of 110 pound cardstock. I cut it out at seven inches. The side was of course already eight and a half. I'll use the extra bit from that a little bit later. But let's put this on the scoreboard. And we're going to score this in half at three and a half. Once this card is done, it's going to measure eight and a half by three and a half. And I like to score it a few times just to really loosen up the fibers of the paper so it doesn't crack when you go to fold it or bend it in half. I'm also going to score it at one and three quarters. And this just divides it in half again. Now let's flip this over and fold it. I'll use my bone folder to flatten the fold and I like to flip it over and press it down again. Let's do the same thing to our second score line and I'm just folding it inside and pressing it down flat. So this will be your card base for your slimline easel card. This is what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, I'm going to put this aside for a minute and work on some more die cutting. I'm going to cut out some clouds. I'll put some craft tape on this so it doesn't shift when I run it through my die cutting machine. And here it is. It has the cute little dot detailing around the edges. It's just so fun. So this is going to be another panel for our card and I'll show you what it looks like. So it just attaches to the bottom half of the fold like that. So let's cut out some toadstools and some grass and I'll tape those down as well. I'll run these through my die cutting machine and here they are. There, there's the toadstool panel and then this one is the grass. And I do end up cutting down the toadstool panel just a little bit along the bottom because I'm going to be layering these. So now I'm going to cut out the toadstool caps. And here they are. I'm just going to put them in my little tray for safekeeping for a few minutes. But I love all the different sizes of these. And the little dots in the center, you can pop those out or keep them in. But this is just a very cute, well thought out set. So now let's do some stamping. I chose several images from the stamp set and I'm going to stamp them onto a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. Just snug that up into the corner again. And then I'm going to use some Copic Friendly Black ink. This one is from Simon Says Stamp. And I do stamp it out several times, but I'll just show one stamping for the sake of time. So now I can close the door of the Misty and walk my fingers over all of the images. Now it's all ready to color in. I pulled out a bunch of Copic markers and I'm going to color in the largest toadstool on camera. The rest I did off camera just for the sake of time. I placed all of the caps to the left top corner so you can see those if you're interested in knowing what colors I used. But this large toadstool was so much fun to color in. 
I'm starting with some earth tones to color in the stem and underneath the fairy cap, as well as all of the dots. I'll come back with a little bit of shading on these dots to make them look like they're sticking out to give them some dimension. And for the fairy cap, I'm going to put a little bit of orange right at the bottom. This will just give it an interesting orangey tinge at the bottom instead of just being all red. And then I'm using an R22. This is a really light reddish, almost pink color. And color in the rest of the top of the toadstool. It's going around all of the little dots on it. To add some shading, I'm going to be using the R24. Just adding a little shading here and there under the dots and along the edges. And now for the frog. I looked on Google at different frogs to get an idea of how I wanted to color him in. And I'm going to coloring him in with the traditional greens. But I saw some really cute frogs that had orange bellies. <laughs> so I'm coming in with a light orange for his belly. And then a little bit of a darker orange for shading. But isn't he cute? And now for the leaves underneath the toadstool, I'll use my lightest color first. And I'll go ahead and color in the grass with this color as well. Sorry, my head gets in the way there. And then I'll use a darker green to add some shading. But isn't that just the cutest toadstool image? The little toadstool is really cute too, and there's a snail underneath it. So just so much fun little details in these stamps. Now I can finish up my coloring off camera. And once I'm done with my Copic coloring or with any kind of coloring, especially colored pencils, I like to freshen up my line. So I popped it back in the Misty and I'm putting on the same black ink and stamping it out over the colored in images. It just makes the lines pop, I think. And I just stamp it once. And here it is all brightened up. I taped on the coordinating dies so they don't shift when I run them through my die cutting machine. And here they are. I'll just pop these out. Look how fun those are. And here's the little toadstool and you can see the inner bits that it cuts out too. It's just fabulous. So I do end up stamping out two more flowers and coloring them in for the card. I'll put these aside now and work on the card base. I didn't really need to tape it down. I was just worried about the ink spilling over to the back side of the card base. So I'm using the new color of Distress Ink, and this one is called Prize Ribbon, and it's just a gorgeous color of blue. I'm just adding it to the top portion of my card base, as well as beneath the clouds. And of course, I don't take it all the way up to the clouds so that they can remain white. Now for some greens. I'm going to add some more Distress Oxides to my grass. I'm using Rustic Wilderness on the grass, and then I wanted a little bit of a lighter green below it. So I'll use Lucky Clover on the grass and the toadstools on this panel. But I wanted them to be kind of patchy like grass is. So I didn't get a perfectly smooth blending on those. So let's put these together. I'll add the taller grass first with a little bit of liquid glue. I'll stand this up and make sure that it's level. And now for the toadstool panel. I'll use a little bit more glue. And I'm making sure to put glue up the stems of the toadstools too. Just to keep them in place. And then I can just flip this over and put it at the bottom of this panel. Before I put the caps on the toadstools, I want to place all of my flowers and toadstools. But look how beautifully these dies coordinate. They all dip in the same area and raise in the same area. It's just a fun look. I love that. 
Okay, so let's start gluing down our flowers flat. Some of them I'm going to tuck behind the grass. And some I don't have to tuck because they're going to be hidden by other elements. So I'll just place this one behind the smaller mushroom. This card is just going to be filled with all of these images. It's so much fun. Now for the third yellow flower. And then for the blue bells. And I will tuck these behind the first layer of grass. Once everything's pretty much in place, except for the two toadstools, of course, I can add the caps to the smaller toadstools behind it. So I'll use just some more liquid glue again for this and just press all of those into place. But it adds just such a fun touch to this card. So the toadstools I popped up with some foam adhesive. And I'll put those down next. And now for the smaller toadstool. I just love the skyline on this card too. Those clouds are so pretty. Okay, now that everything is placed, I'm going to put this aside and we're going to work on our sentiment. I did this off camera. I just stamped it out with VersaFine Onyx Black ink and heat embossed it with clear embossing powder. And now I'm putting on some Tattered Rose Distress Oxide ink just to give the sentiment a little bit of color. This is going to be our stopper on the card. This will hold the easel portion of it in place. I'm going to put down two layers on this. So I'll attach the sentiment to another strip of cardstock. This is heavyweight cardstock, the 110 pound. And now I can add the two frog images around the sentiment. So let's attach our main panel to our card base. I'm just putting glue under the fold. I don't want to attach it completely down. Otherwise you won't get the easel effect. So let's allow that to dry for just a few seconds. And then we can glue on the sentiment and the stopper. More liquid glue for this. And I'm just going to put it at the bottom inside of the card. And then there's plenty of room up above to write your message. I'll just allow that to dry for a few seconds. And then the top panel catches on the stopper. And it just holds it in place just perfectly. It's so much fun. I do end up adding some confetti pieces around this card. I thought these shiny green ones looked really nice on this card. I'm holding the card down with my left hand just because it wants to pop up, of course. And here it is all complete. Isn't that just charming? So you can fold it up and it catches on the stopper. And then when you fold it down, of course, you see the pretty blue sky behind it. Like so. Oh, this is going to be so much fun to send out into the mail. And it was so easy to put together. It was such a fun summer card. But of course, you could make it into a fall time card too, just by changing the colors a little bit. I hope you give this technique a try. And of course, I will have all of the links to the Scrappy Tells Crafts products listed in the description box below. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye.